Why, hello and welcome to another episode of the Josie Dumont podcast. I'm your host and leadership and mindset coach. And today I am joined by the podcast strategist and producer for thought leaders, Isabella Sanchez Castaneda. Welcome, darling. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk today. I got to learn so much about you on my show. I want to just hear what questions you have. Yes, I'm just like so ready to turn the tables and ask you some questions. And I can't wait to pick your brain and tap into your expertise, obviously, as we will be diving into the topic of why every entrepreneur should have a podcast. But before we do so, I want to know like your reason and your story for doing what you do and how did you how did you end up here today? Yeah. So I had wanted to be a journalist since before even the sixth grade. And I thought that it was everything that I wanted. Um, I started on like the elementary school broadcast Mm -hmm. thing in the mornings and then uh, worked on the school newspaper all the way through high school and then went to college for journalism and really thought it was going to be everything and a bag of chips. And (laughs) then um, quickly realized that it wasn't, but I for a lot of different reasons, but I still wanted a way to work in the communication field, really work in um, helping people tell their stories. And at first, because I had been a digital editor at a magazine that looked like social media management, that looked like content strategy, because I figured if I could use social media to get people onto a magazine website or to read an article, I could probably do it to get someone onto a website for an offer. And a lot of testing, a lot of pivoting, a lot of trials. Throughout that period, I had been managing a podcast already. And uh, people started asking me, hey, you know, can you help me with it? I then started my own podcast and more people asked, hey, can you help me with my show? And I took that as direction that I should really focus on podcast strategy. And even through that, I have pivoted how I offer, what I offer, what I sell, But it always comes back to how can we create episodes that position you as an authority in your space and that makes people want to take the next step with you rather than you like begging them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's a really abbreviated version of just how I got here. I love that. And I'm, I'm so curious, why do you then think and every entrepreneur should have actually a podcast and also how has it influenced like your own journey? Obviously you already mentioned that people then started asking you, can you help me? But was there also a different element in terms of maybe like increasing your authenticity, building your personal brand where your podcast specifically helped you with? Yeah. So I would say the way that I started my podcast is not the way I recommend (laughs) other people to. So I was playing the game Gordon Ramsay restaurant dash and listening to Gary V's podcast. And it's very mm-hmm. specific. It's, 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 it's very Gordon specific Ramsey, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay restaurant dash, which is like no longer really in operation. And that makes mm-hmm. me very sad, but I was at a place where I just was really frustrated by my business. So I took this week to just un I don't know, unplug my brain. And I was playing this game and listening to Gary Vee. And Gary Vee said, you know, every personal brand, every business should have a podcast. And this was in 2021. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I wasn't seeing a lot of coaches, consultants, online service providers do it. And I, I don't know if it was just, you know, my brain was just so susceptible to taking things in, playing this one game. But I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. And that night I started my show. I just recorded an episode and went for it. And I did 30 episodes in 30 days and they had no plan. They were not structured. They were whatever came out of my mouth. And that's the part where I'm like, please don't do that. I don't recommend (laughs) it. I don't recommend it for anyone. Um, but that's, that's how I started. And so, um, I would definitely say don't, but what they really taught me was what muscle am I exercising in terms of speaking, in terms of developing my voice when I have to talk for more than 30 seconds? And I was so used to trying to sell, trying to teach via 10 second stories, 30 second reels. 
and mm-hmm. maybe a carousel post. And people thought that, you know, carousel posts had all this nuance. And so what did it mean for me to actually have to explain myself for 10 minutes for 15 minutes? And I've never been a fan of creating super long podcast episodes. So it's always like 10 to 15, but even that is such a stretch Mm -hmm. that I think it makes someone who is claiming to be a thought leader really have to own it. And how did you feel at first? Because I only remember from my journey, when I started out with the podcast, I felt so uncomfortable and kind of like you, obviously before that I was only like doing maybe a live or was like on stories talking. And even then I was feeling uncomfortable because I'm quite introverted. So then obviously recording myself like in the long form, I was just like, I do have a lot to say, but how the fuck am I going to say this? Like, I am shit scared. How do I do it? Like, how do I make it as easy as possible? And I was like hesitating so long to just click record at first because I was like, this is, this is awful. This is horrible. Or I would like re-record, I think the first episode, like five times, Mm. (laughs) just until I felt like, okay, this is bearable to listen to, (laughs) at least for myself. But how was it for you? How was your experience in that regard? Yeah, um, I think I still went through the whole thing of hating the sound of my voice. I think that's something Mm -hmm. so natural. But at this point, I had already worked in uh, broadcast journalism. I had already done voiceovers. I had gotten kind of over that piece. Um, I had already, you know, practiced looking a fool on reels for a really long time. (laughs) So I can't say I was afraid of it in that sense. Uh, I will admit that during those first 30 episodes where I was just putting out whatever was on my mind, I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is going Mm -hmm. to blow up. It wasn't actually like the, the, I guess, fears, insecurities, doubts didn't come until a little bit later when... I noticed that these things that I thought were so fantastic were kind of not doing anything for my (laughs) brand. Like they were, or people started just being like, what do you do? So I think my doubts came actually a little bit later. I know that most people, it's the other way around where they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And most of the people who come to me, I have to say, you know, just dip your toe in the water, get going, get started. But I had the advantage of just years of hearing the sound of my own voice. Mm -hmm. Um, it was different when it was like my own opinion. And I think that that's the thing that holds the most people back is to start a podcast. You do have to say I'm worth listening to. And that can trigger a lot for people who maybe have been told before that their opinion doesn't matter or have been told before that they aren't important. And you have to really work through a lot of that as you start your show. And is this something you are helping your clients as well with to like just work through that kind of fear, maybe even easing them into it so they don't feel like I'm just talking gibberish and I don't feel like this is worth anything? Yeah, I start them where I wish I had started, which is Mm. I do ask for a lot of planning. I do encourage them to really outline what they're going to say. Because if you're already afraid of what you're going to say, or you're afraid that you're going to sound bad, don't add to that by going in unprepared. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have an outline, understand what it is that you want to say, show up with the tools already laid out for you rather than scrambling in the moment and saying, what do I say? Where am I going with this? Oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. Now I sound bad. Now I ramble. And it just adds so much stress to an already potentially stressful situation. That is very true. And I have to say like from my own experience too, what made it very easy for me was, I think you actually recommended that also last episode to just have a script or to script your episodes. So I'm, I am writing down like the main points and I'm adding like free spaces where I know, okay, I could go off a little bit on a tangent. (laughs) So just leave a little bit of like free room to play with but also to just plan out in advance, like several episodes. So in the very beginning, what I actually did was brainstorming at least 52 ideas Mm. to just know, okay, in case I feel like I have zero clue what to talk about, I can just go back to this list and I know where to start with something. And that, that just gave me a little bit more like sense of security as well 
because I was like, okay, for a year, at least a year, if I would do completely solo episodes, I'm fine. But now that I'm doing guest episodes, it's even two years. So it's even better. Yes, absolutely. I, I love that idea. I might steal that idea. Um, and I, <laughs> yeah. And I think that it's really important to ask yourself how your episodes are going to stack together. And so not only just planning and outlining one episode, but planning and outlining multiple, maybe in a month and knowing what journey am I taking my people on? So for you Mm -hmm. with mindset, we can go in so many different directions with mindset and leadership. So if you're not intentional about how things are moving together, someone might be coming in for the first time and you're teaching a really advanced concept. And then the next one, it's more like beginner. And then it it might Mm -hmm. feel a little bit disjointed versus being able to say, oh, I'm going to actually walk someone through how their posture impacts their leadership and mindset in these different scenarios. And then you do two or three episodes that are around the same topic, but in a different example, that might be much more beneficial and less stressful for you so that you can really develop an idea and go through with it without having to kind of sporadically ping pong uh, different topics all the time. I will do that. <laughs> Please do that. Like, yes. Thank you. I will do that. I well, how I basically do is with different content pillars around leadership mindset, action taking, uh, burnout, well-being. Like I play around with those, but I haven't so far gone consecutively, kind of like almost mini series, not necessarily series, but like let's talk for a month just about leadership to have like my solo episodes be more in this regard. So I would literally just ping pong around those core pillars, but not in like just action taking, just leadership, just mindset. Yes. And so the thing with this is the reason that it, it works really well when you do this is you can lead more effectively to an offer. And so Ooh. if you have a leadership specific offer, let's talk about leadership for three, four five weeks, and then lead all those episodes to this one offer. Then the next time around, and I know that for you, they're, they're usually combined, but maybe you're handling different objections with people who have never done mindset work before. And so you can stack all of those things together slowly over time, bring down their objections, let them know that they're safe here. And then they are taking that action to this specific mindset offer. And so that brings me to, I always encourage clients to reverse engineer from where are we leading people? Is it a webinar? Mm -hmm. What's the webinar about? For you, if it's a webinar, I don't know why I keep going with this posture thing, but it's a (laughs) webinar about how your physical posture changes your mindset, changes the way you're perceived, which changes your leadership. Then let's talk about how the body impacts these things over and over during your episode so that it leads to this webinar and people are excited and they have the appropriate information versus if you tell me, no, it's going to, I really want to sell my book. I'm going to go for six weeks. I'm going to sell my book. Okay. Let's pull from the chapters of your book. Let's Mm -hmm. take those things. Each one of those stacks together and the call to action being the book feels really natural. That is very true. And on top of that, I want to ask you actually, do you have like a favorite success client story where you literally took them maybe from, oh, I'm shit scared to I'm fucking loving having a podcast. Um, I, I'm thinking of a couple different people, but I'm especially thinking of Danielle who had the idea of a podcast on her mind for four years. And since she started her business, basically, she was like, Mm -hmm. I want a podcast. I know a podcast is really important. I know that having a show would help me access speaking opportunities, access different, you know, sales opportunities, all these things, but she couldn't bring herself to do it. And it was a little bit of perfectionism getting in the way. It was a little bit of that fear, that doubt of, will anyone listen to me? Yeah. Does anyone like me in particular enough to listen to me on a podcast rather than just stumbling across my content? And so we worked through a lot of that through the planning process, through saying, well, let's just plan 12 episodes. Where are we leading them to? We were leading them to her one-on-one offer. And let's build this idea that you're you're really the person that people want to hear from. And now I believe she's 18, 19 episodes in, might be more by the time this comes out. And she loves coming up with this content. She loves 
being able to give this nuance. And I won't say that it's her first favorite medium. It's not like she's jumping at it, but she's way more comfortable. And it has allowed her to then repurpose content to then have for her email, to have for her social, to have for her blog. And it's so much easier now because she was able to to dive into her podcast. And so hers is called Marketing That Works with Danielle Mm -hmm. Harris. And it is so, so, so good. And just so wonderful to see her every single time get a little bit more comfortable, add a little bit more of her own personality and flavor to it. I love that. I love that. How how you basically really helped her to go from not really wanting to, but well, she had the idea, right? But not, but really being kind of like afraid of it to then being like, no, let's add maybe a little bit more of me into it. And that's such an important point because I, I too, I feel like every single episode, I get more and more comfortable to just be, relax a little bit more, like move my hands differently or like speak differently or not being afraid to like have an M here or to just ramble. Sometimes I ramble. But to just embrace that those kind of like little quirks about me, because that's how I am when I talk to you in general. Like, I really want to make it as natural as possible. Absolutely. And, and that is also, we you started asking, like, why should every entrepreneur have a podcast? That right there of you get a taste of what it's like to talk to you is one of the reasons it's so powerful. Because... Mm-hmm. On social, we were talking about this a little bit before we started yeah. recording. Most of the time on social, when we're talking directly to the camera, we can't help but change. We can't help but alter our voice a little bit mm-hmm. or triple think the next hook, triple think the next thing that we're going to say. But on the podcast with planning, right, even with the outline, usually the flow is a little bit better we get a sense of, oh, she likes to use this word. She coaches people in this way. She's reassuring or she's very dominant or whatever it is. People now feel safer going onto that discovery call with you because they're like, oh, I kind of know how she talks. Or yeah. they they feel better going onto the webinar and saying, I know exactly what to expect. And so it just builds this sense of familiarity because we do get to be more and more of ourselves. Even when an episode is scripted or planned, you still get that just feeling of warmth from someone's voice that you're not going to get otherwise. That is really true. And especially I find the voice piece is such a big one because very often, if I haven't heard someone's voice before and then I suddenly hear it for the first time, I don't know why, but I'm always like, oh, that's what she sounds like. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's just like, oh, it yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel familiar. And I mm-hmm. think that so many times, I, you know, raise your hand if you've heard the cliche of building like no like and trust. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. But then we just hear it over and over. It's kind of turned into this gibberish, but it's like, when we hear someone's voice, we know them a little bit better. We know, oh, they they sound really confident or, Mm -hmm. oh, maybe they sound a little bit afraid. Maybe that, that can determine how much we trust a person is whether we believe that they believe what they're saying. Do we like how they sound? There, it's okay if there are voices in the world that you don't like. <laughs> if there yes. are a little, you know, there are people who prefer one way. Maybe they prefer someone who's very soft spoken. Mm-hmm. Maybe they prefer someone who really brings the energy. You can determine all of those things via a podcast, and the people who know, like, and trust you will do that a lot quicker. That is such a good way to find or connect like with your ideal client, right? Because they basically scout you also out in terms of like your energy that you bring across in the podcast episode. And if they are like, oh my gosh, no, like she she's too cringe. She sounds crazy. She's too loud for me. Then, you know, cool. That person is not for me. Let's go to someone else. So it is really a, such a good way to just test almost the potential connection with the coach. Mm -hmm. And test who you like to learn from, because even if an episode is not intentionally educational, maybe it's a more personal storytelling, you're still learning from that person. And when you search, right, the other day I was searching uh, in my podcast app, I use Spotify, how to write an ebook, because I wanted to see 
what are different people's advice? Mm -hmm. And three or four different episodes from three or four different coaches came up. And I was like, this is how you write your ebook. This is how you write your ebook. And I listened to all four of them. They were all relatively the same. It's an ebook, but one of them taught it with a lot of enthusiasm and with a lot Mm. of like, I know this is going to work for you, speaking belief into me, speaking belief into the idea versus another person spoke it in this very dry way of like, first you write this, then you write this other thing. Then you write this other thing. It was almost the same information, Mm -hmm. but I connected more with one. But that doesn't mean that other people are not going to prefer the opposite and say, I actually don't want you to include all this fluff. I just want the step by step. And so we understand that. And also, we understand that when you want that information, like, oh, I want to be a better leader. And you type Mm -hmm. that into your podcast and you say, you know, leadership tips and Josie's podcast comes up you're going to say, oh, wow. Okay. I, I want to learn leadership from her. And maybe three other podcasts about leadership come up mm-hmm. and you test those and you like some of the things and you don't. And now you get to choose more broadly, more intentionally than if just a rando comes up on your Instagram. <laughs> that is very true. And now that we talked a little bit about basically how to start and also why we should have one, I do also want to ask you if someone had like a podcast maybe for years, they have recorded like hundreds of episodes already, but their following maybe is still like super low or downloads are super low. What would you recommend those people to do so they can really leverage their podcast? So first I would ask what is low to you? Um, And I always try to shift the focus from listener numbers to action that they're taking because you could Mm -hmm. have a podcast that for three years has only received 10 listeners per episode. Those 10 are engaged. They're responding to your questions. They're connected with you on Instagram. They're buying the things that you're offering going to your events, all that stuff. I'm cool with 10 if they're action takers and they're resonating. If you have, I'm actually more concerned about the person who has 300 listeners, but none of them take action Mm. and none of them feel connected enough to do something with that person. Again, an event, an offer of responding to an email. And so it's looking at what metric are we tracking and is listener really the best one? If you're someone who's just doing this to have a platform, maybe you do eventually want to get brand deals. Okay. We can, we can focus on listeners, but if you're someone who's doing this because it is related to a business, let's look at, are they taking action? Are they clicking the links in the show notes? Are they reaching out to you? If the answer to those things is no, then we can start to audit, okay, what topics are we doing? Maybe you're like Mm -hmm. me and you, you have a diary. And when I had that, the diary style, People would reach out and be like, oh my goodness, we're best friends. And my next thought, and I did say all, but my next (laughs) thought was just like, are you going to pay me? (laughs) Like, like, are you, are we, are we like that connected? Like, do you want to be, do you want to work with me? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't necessarily ask explicitly, but the answer was usually no. The answer was just like, no, you're, you're my bestie. And I had more listeners at that time than I do now. But at that time, they were all like, you're my best friend. You're so cool. This is so fun to listen to. But it wasn't, Mm. now the messages I get, again, fewer listeners. Now the messages are, oh, wow, I really applied that. Or I got a result from what you just shared. Or, hey, I'm actually really curious how I can work with you. And so those are the things. How can you shift if you're noticing that you're in the first camp is what are you talking about? Is it relevant to your listener or is it something that you just want to get off your chest? Mm -hmm. Is it something that you're just like, oh, I I read this cool book and now I want to talk about it. If your podcast is not about books and that book is not about what your offers are about, maybe call a friend. (laughs) Maybe, (laughs) maybe don't bring it to the show. Yeah. And that feels harsh. I think for a lot of people, especially if you've been running your podcast for years this way, it feels harsh. Mm. But it it's really me reminding you to think about the person on the other side listening rather than just what you want to talk about. And so if the other person on the other side doesn't want to hear about this fantasy novel when you're talking about building an email list, 
unless you can tie the two together, it might be time to skip it. And so refining those topics, going back to reverse engineering, where do you want them to go? Do you want them to engage? Do you want them to go on your email list? Do you want them into an offer and going that way? Um, I would also look at your podcast title. Some people have just simply Ooh. chosen um, titles that don't make a lot of sense. And I was recently at a at a conference for podcasting and someone introduced themselves and they told me the name of their podcast. And then they spent the next two minutes explaining to me how the title didn't match the content. And I simply suggested, why don't we change the title? And they <laughs> were like, no, I don't want to do that. And I said, okay. But in the back of my mind, I was thinking, what if they had spent not two minutes explaining to me why there's a mismatch and instead two minutes explaining to me their favorite guest that they had on and why I should listen. And so mm. it might just be that your title doesn't actually convey what the person is going to learn, what the person is going to walk away with. And so people, new audience members don't feel confident clicking and saying, this is going to be for me. And so that really hurts with like new audiences, people who don't already follow you from some other platform. And so I know I just threw a bunch of different tips at you, but to kind of sum it up, it's just looking at how are you choosing your topics? Are those topics for your listener or for you? Are you reverse engineering the topics? And does your title match the mm. topics that you do touch on? I would start there. There's so many other little pieces that we can go into, but go with those three and then report back. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Those were really, really great tips. And I'm like, before we go into, into the fire round of questions, if you were to be like brutally honest with my name of the podcast, what would you say? I would at least include a subtitle oh. because the, the challenge with the podcast being your name mm -hmm. is I have to know you first to know that this is for me. Mm -hmm. And so that's fine if you have another platform or several platforms that are feeding the podcast and you're okay with the podcast being a secondary touch point. That's a choice. That's fine. Mm -hmm. If you instead want the podcast to potentially be a first touch point, I would say leadership, leadership and mindset at the bare minimum, leadership and mindset with Josie. And that way it's, I know, oh, okay, I'm going to learn about leadership and mindset. I might be a random person who stumbles upon the show searching for leadership and mindset on mm -hmm. Spotify. And I now know, oh, okay, that's what I'm going to learn versus who's Josie. <laughs> um, and so it's just simply a choice of, do you want it to be a first or a second touch point? That is such a good point because I see like so many people like struggling literally with the name or the branding of their podcast and they as you say, they might be even really stuck with the name they chose in the beginning, but they actually have a completely different intention also for their podcast. And then to change it, they're like, no, I don't want to change it, but I still want it to work. Yeah. I've, I have been, I mean, I've changed the name of my show. The original name was building, mm -hmm. um, building with East Media Inc. Now it's visible with East Media Inc. because it's about visibility, but I'm in the middle of uh, reconsidering the name and changing mm -hmm. it to something more specific now. And so it's really evolving with your listener and evolving with your goals. And it can be so hard because you're like, oh, maybe people love the name. Maybe the connection that I built with people because of the name will go away, but you might be hindering yourself from connecting with even more people in a bigger way, uh, by not changing it. And so it, and it can be something like in the beginning, you might say formerly known as, um, as you start to let it go, mm. but it's worth it. Um, the other thing is I originally said you could do a tagline where if you want to keep it like, yeah, be being able to say the Josie Dumont show about leadership and mindset or leadership and mindset coaching for, and then your ideal client the only thing is that that tagline might not appear on every platform, but it's a transition mm -hmm. point that could work. That is a really good point. I might need to look into that. And in general, I just want to say also like pivoting can be so, so, so helpful. And sometimes literally is the thing that you need to do to just progress. So to just try familiarize yourself with the idea and play around with it 
and don't just like completely write it off. I know from my experience previously, especially when my boyfriend comes in, it's like, you maybe, maybe change the hook of that content. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want to change it. I love it. But to just mm -hmm. be at least open to the idea and ask questions and get curious about like what could be maybe the purpose of changing can be so, so helpful. And then if you do pivot, you might be like, why didn't I do this earlier? Like, mm. it makes so much sense. There's nothing wrong with pivoting. There's nothing to be scared of of pivoting. So I just want to, I just want to point that out. Yeah, I think, I think we think, and I've had this thought so much that someone is going to point it out and be like, Ooh, that girl changed the name of her show <laughs> again, or, Ooh, she changed her offer again. Mm -hmm. She started changing the way that she introduces herself again. I think that all the time. And then you actually do it and no one, no one cares. Or yeah. the people who notice are actually the people who are like, oh, wow, this resonates so much more with me now. And mm -hmm. you actually see that positive, but we're so afraid of like, they're going to notice that I didn't have my shit together before this. And it's real. It's real. That's, mm -hmm. that's scary to admit, but it's like, well, that name served me in that season. And now a different name serves me now, or that offer served me in that season. A different offer serves me now. And we're going to be going through it for a while if if yeah. we plan to stay in business for as long as we plan to. Um, and it's it's just scary every single time, but it, it'll work and, it, and it'll be good. But give yourself that freedom. And again, if you have to, if you feel awkward, say in the beginning, just like, hey, this was formally known as this. Do an episode that explains why you're changing the name. Bring them along that journey. All of yeah. it is an option. Exactly. Like just being brutally honest, almost and fully transparent also with your, with your, with your audience. And as you say, like taking them on the journey might even open like doors to different discussions that you can have with them because they can relate. They might be like, oh yeah, I'm pivoting. Oh yeah. I was being scared of this. Like, cool. We're doing it. We're like we're in this together. Right. So don't be afraid of pivoting. Okay. I want to do a little fire round of questions with you. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Before we do so, please tell me a number between one and 10. Okay, seven. I love that. Everybody says seven. Oh, really? I was oh going to say nine. <laughs> I was going to say nine, but we could change it. Nine. I want to be different. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we do it different for you. Nine questions is what you get. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I didn't yeah. know that's what it was. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> right. So I'll be asking you nine questions that you can answer with one word or a short sentence. Okay. Ready? What is the Isabella name? Uh, sorry, Isabella name. <laughs> oh my God. Um, because I always put in my note, what is the name? And now I said name. There we go. Oh, good. <laughs> Let me do it again. Okay. What is the Isabella way of living and leading your best life? <gasps> Ooh. I'm going to cry about it first and then figure it out. I love that. Yes. I know that that doesn't sound like super positive, but I'm like, it's okay. We're going to feel our feelings and then we'll, we'll move forward. Oh, I love that. It might, that might even already ask, uh, answer the second question, which is when shit hits the fan, what do you tell yourself to get through it? At first I'm like, everything's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. And then I cry about it and move on. <laughs> it's okay. We're not dying. <laughs> Yes. But then I realize that we are kind of dying and then I cry and then, then that's all oh. figured out. Yeah. But I think that's the important part, right? We're figuring it out. Yes. Okay. What is your key habit for success? Journaling. Mm, I like that one. What is your favorite book that you would recommend to everyone? The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of that one before. I think I have it. Um, I'm going to show you it. Yes, please do. I'm I'm always so afraid this bookshelf up there is going to fall. Um, <laughs> Hopefully not. Touch wood. Okay, ambulance. Um, 15, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. This was probably the first John Maxwell book I have read. Um, he does these like, 15 laws, 16, like there's 16 laws of communication. There's 21 laws of leadership. 
Um, and he's a leadership um, genius. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it is just reminders um, of, of who you need to be. Um, like I'm just opening up to a random chapter. This is chapter three and it says the law of the mirror. You must see value in yourself to add value to yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one thing I have highlighted on this page says, um, many people don't believe in themselves. They don't see the possibilities that God put in them. They possess a hundred acres of possibility yet never cultivate them because they are convinced that they won't be able to learn and grow and blossom into something wonderful. Um, and this was not planned, so I could have chosen a, a different quote, but, um, it's just the, the idea that, um, we are capable of growth. I love this. I have had multiple interns throughout my, um, time in business and I've Mm -hmm. gifted most of them this book because I think you can come back to it again and again and again. I love books like that because you can just, as you just did, literally randomly open it and you get a nugget out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I need to add that to my reading list. It's just growing. We're like with these episodes when I have guests on my my reading list is just growing all the time. But I love it. If you have, if you, I don't know if um, outside of the States this would work, but in the States, if you have Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A, most of John Maxwell's books are on Hoopla and you get them for free on audio or ebook. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's... Mm, that sounds sexy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. What is a word or expression that you say all the time? Oh my God. <laughs> um, Silence. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um vibes i'm just like oh, we're just gonna go off vibes nice i like that one what is the theme song of your life these are so hard um <laughs> these are such hard questions <laughs> we need um, to get to know you that's why i'm asking i know <laughs> the theme song of my life <gasps> oh this is so not the theme song of my life right now, but um, I go to this dance class on Tuesdays and it is the most fun like hour of my week. And she always plays Pretty Girl Era. And it's just like, I'm in my Pretty Girl Era. So is that actually the theme song of my life? No, but that's the first song that came to mind mm-hmm. just because I'm I'm looking forward to this dance class. Oh, that sounds super fun. Gosh. If I come up with another one, I'll send it to you. Okay, yes, please do. What is your main takeaway from today? Mm, um, That I probably need to talk about episode titling more. Um, But I also think just like how much I enjoy uh, doing these these interviews. Again, it had been a while since I had been the guest versus Mm -hmm. the interviewer. Um, So I just enjoyed getting to embody that. (laughs) I'm glad I could offer you the space for you. And also, I'm just grateful that you spent the time with me. But we have two more questions. Okay. What is one thing you want to unlearn? Assuming the worst case scenario. Oh, that is a good one. It's a a tough one to let go. It's a tough one. (laughs) Yeah. I know what you mean. Okay. Last question. What question would you love to ask the the listeners? Mm. What gift are you hiding from yourself? Mm. What gift are you hiding from yourself? That's such a good one. Yes, I like it. (laughs) Thank you, Isabella. This was so fun. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you for just being here with me. Thank you for connecting. And before we go, where can the listeners and YouTube watchers find you and get in touch with you? Yeah. So main place is going to be isamediainc.com. So I-S-A-M-E-D-I-A-I-N-C.com. There you'll find links to my socials, to um, now my two podcasts that I have, as well as some amazing shows that I have the privilege of helping people put together. Um, so definitely go there. 
Amazing. I will also, of course, put all of the information and the links into the description box below. And with that, I shall see you all or be in your earbuds next week, Monday again with another episode. Bye. Thank you. I get to be on the on the guest side. Um, oh, how often have you been on the guest side? I've done it quite a bit, but especially right now, as you know, just doing so many yeah. interviews where I'm the host, I'm like, someone asked me a question. <laughs> <laughs>